You're listening to an Anazal Ministries podcast. What if the creator of Family Guy created Star Trek as well? Well, guys, good news. We're talking about Seth MacFarlane's The Orville, which is essentially Family Guy's version of Star Trek. It's not animated. It's not Family Guy. It's the same creator, a lot of the same humor. It's going to be a fun topic. This is Systematic Ecology. We are the priest to the geeks. I am Joshua Knoll, and today I am here joined by a very special guest that uh, we met through a Catholic Geeks Facebook group, Alyssa Courtright. Um, Alyssa, welcome to the show. Thank you for joining me. Thanks for having me. Um, this is my first time doing a podcast, so I'm excited. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, listeners, just give her as much grace as possible, <laughs> which, you know, always do that for me. Um, yeah. So recently I've been geeking out on a lot of stuff. Um, I- I've been. I started watching um, the inside job on, on Netflix. It's like a weird animated, like all the conspiracy theories are real is basically the premise of the show. And it's just so silly. It's, it's fun for me. Um, Yeah. Uh, Alyssa, did you have anything that you're um, you've been watching geeking out on other than uh, today's topic? (laughs) Um, Actually, I've been watching a lot of Star Trek, the next generation lately, because I had not seen any Star Trek. And so I was kind of like, Oh, I guess I should check it out. So I started watching the next generation series. Yeah. That's most people's favorite. And for some reason, the one I have the hardest time getting into, (laughs) (laughs) I I love deep space nine. It's probably that. And then like some of the newer ones I like, um, strange new worlds. It's like that one. And then, um, the cartoon that they do, lower decks it's you know it's got pretty similar humor to today's topic so that's that's a cool transition yeah that's what i hear i haven't watched it but i've heard like some of the same people like both shows yeah it's it's pretty amusing i highly recommend it but i'll save that for my recommendations later but i'll say the same thing (laughs) guys we're gonna jump right into this episode um i'm excited this is one that i honestly i hadn't thought about for a while and then i saw your post on facebook and i was like um you mentioned something about talking about the orville and more of some of the deeper themes in it i was like you know I haven't thought about that show for a minute, but that's a really good show. So, um, yeah. Can you want to fill people in? Like, what is your kind of background with the show? How is this? uh, Why is this show important to you? Let's start there. Um, So I didn't know anything about I mean, like I had heard about Star Trek, obviously, and like Star Wars hadn't watched either of them. I had seen some Marvel movies, um, also had little to no knowledge of Family Guy. And I was actually working Um, I live in Louisiana, but I was working in Florida on the Disney College program and there was a hurricane about to hit. So I was like, I need to download some stuff to my tablet in case the power goes out and I have nothing to do. And so I was on Disney Plus and just kind of like ran into this by mistake. And I looked at like the premise and it was like a captain of a starship is assigned with his ex-wife. And I'm like, oh, that sounds kind of like interesting. So I started watching, wasn't really sure about it for like the first two episodes. (laughs) And then I was hooked on it by the third one. Yeah. Yeah. I was surprised that Disney picked it up. Like, yeah, because I don't remember where I first saw it, but I did not first see it on Disney Plus. And I was like, why does Disney have this? I guess maybe yeah, it was like one of those things Fox owned or something. It was. It used to be Fox. And then I don't know if Disney like bought it out or got the rights or something. I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. Disney, I think they bought all of Fox except for Fox News. They were like, hey, we don't want that. Mm. <laughs> Can't say I blame them. Um, yeah. So, OK. What um, you meant, you kind of touched on the description kind of is like this captain gets paired with his ex-wife. Um, it is a comedy and it's really funny how they kind of play that part of almost like sitcom style of like mm-hmm. she cheated on him with some kind of weird alien or something. And then like all these years pass and this kind of like agreed upon with her and somebody else had a we'll let him back into Starfleet because he kind of went into some depression, became a terrible captain. And she's like, I can get him back there. So she kind of goes behind people's back a little bit and they end up, you know, randomly paired or something. I forget like what the excuse is, but but they end up paired together and having to do this thing as her being his co-captain pilot, whatever. Obviously, he's not thrilled about it. And hijinks pursue lots of like what I would. What's funny is like I don't love Family Guy itself like that. For some reason, the humor just doesn't sit right with me in that show. But yeah. then it's the same kind of humor in this, but I, I like it a lot better, probably because it's more fits in the context of sitcom. Yeah. And it's not just a straight comedy either. Like they have serious moments and then they do have episodes with like higher stakes. So that might be why if it's better, it's not just only that. 
Yeah. Yeah. Well, that, like I'm, I'm thinking of like one of the gags I've seen recently is like one of the, um, why can't I remember his name? Um, the man who gets pregnant, who's laying an egg. Mortis. Yeah. Yeah. He goes to the captain's office. And he has Kermit the Frog on his desk and he's like, oh, who was that? And he's like, oh, well, he was a great captain of old. <laughs> and like just going off. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, that's I mean, he's not wrong. <laughs> no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> pretty, pretty amusing stuff, um, which Bordis, we'll get to that later. But mm -hmm. um, they are a species that are only male. And then he lays an egg that hatches as a female. And that's one of my favorite, probably through line stories of the show. Like if we're talking about premises, like, yeah, the captain's relationship with his ex-wife is like the premise, but that's the storyline that hooked me, I think. Yeah, it was actually. That's the episode that I was watching and I was like, oh, this show can be serious. And I actually do like this show and I am rooting for the main characters, which I before like the first yeah. about two episodes, I was like, this is just so I don't know if I'm going to keep watching this. This is kind of weird. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it was. So <laughs> what what stood out to you was like weird. Why did why did it, you hesitate at first? I hesitated because honestly, the whole cheating storyline, to be completely honest, I was like, oh, captain and ex-wife. That sounds kind of interesting. And then I turned on the first episode and I was like, oh, that's why they got divorced. OK, I'm not sure if I like that or if I can actually sympathize with her as a character like at all. Um, and then episode three, they yeah. all kind of started being like, oh, I actually like these characters. And even she started to be a little bit more like, oh, well, she's making some good points about like the situation with Bordis. Yeah. Yeah. And it's it's one of those like, especially when your first introduction to a character or something like that, it's so easy yeah. to be like, I'm anti that character, you know? Yes. <laughs> but I think in the long run, you kind of come around to her like you're like, OK, yeah. maybe she just made a mistake. I don't know why they decided that's the first thing we needed to see from her. But <laughs> OK, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> which is interesting, especially if they're talking about like uh, marriage, divorce and all that from the Catholic perspective is a lot different than I think the secular world kind of, you know, it's kind yes. of like, yeah, it, it's you're a married deal. for life. You're married for life, yeah. basically. I mean, you made a vow and you're not, you can't break it. But then you're still like, according to the Catholic Church, even like divorce is not like it's frowned upon, but it is like you can still do it. But then after that, you can't get remarried because in God's eyes, you're still married to that person. Yeah, that's um, our, my, the church I grew up in was Church God of Prophecy. And they held that doctrine up until probably like a decade ago. I think they, they say you can get remarried now. I actually attend a Lutheran church now, but. So I don't even know what their stance is on that. But yeah, no, um, I know one big difference between the Catholic and I believe Orthodox as well, as opposed to some of your Protestant churches, is marriage is actually a sacrament, right? Yes. Yeah. Which is for us, usually they only would only say that baptism and um, the, the Lord's Supper are the only sacraments that a lot of Protestant churches recognize. I think Lutheran kind of takes half seas on all of it. But it's uh, it, it's I find it interesting just because like. Obviously, other churches still do marriage and think of it as important. So I'm like, well, mm -hmm. <laughs> OK, guys, <laughs> you just don't want to say it's a sacrament. Cool. Anyway. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. So this show does talk like clearly has a lot of very serious topics that it goes through, even though it does it through kind of a silly, silly lens. One I'm going to talk about a little bit later that hits me particularly different than others because I have friends who are biologists or worked in zoos and stuff. And it's something I care a lot about. They have an episode where they're kind of making fun of how humans used to have zoos and enslave all these other creatures. And then it happens to the humans in the episode. And it does make some good points. And I want to go ahead and like premise with, even though I kind of disagree with a lot of the anti-zoo rhetoric. Yes. I do also think that people who are anti-zoo typically have some really good points. And I'm not like, oh, that side's mm -hmm. stupid and my side's right. It's just kind of a, uh, I think it does more good than harm, but I definitely see what you're saying. Kind of stance, you know? Right. Um, so what what are some, some of the other big storylines that stick out to you? Like, do you have any favorite episodes or anything? Um, well, I think I, in season one, which I'm assuming we're sticking to season one. That works for me. <laughs> That's well, because you I said you hadn't seen most. season, you yeah. said you haven't seen seasons two or three, right? Yeah, I started watching two for this, but then I was like, I, I just didn't get through it yet. So <laughs> that works for me. <laughs> yeah. So in season one, I would say the third episode, which is the one with Bordas and his kid, um, which I'm assuming we're going to end up yeah. talking about. And then um, I liked 
the like the second to last episode and it's really the one because I do like the storyline with Ed and Kelly and how they get closer. Um yeah. and so I liked that episode because it kind of resolves some things from the first episode. Like he finds out that she recommended him to be captain and then he has to deal with that um, you know, his kind of self esteem issues and then her trying to explain to him why she did it because she believes in him. Um so I did like that episode for for that reason, because it's all it's a good like kind of closure to some stuff that happened in season one. And yeah. also kind of like the first real fight they have, I think, that doesn't actually have to do with their marriage. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I got tired of the same fight <laughs> over like like I do understand it. It's not that I wasn't sympathetic. Like, yeah, by all means, dude, still be yeah. pissed about that. But <laughs> I am a little tired of hearing about it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So what the first fight outside of the one about their marriage, what was their first fight? What do you mean? The, the, which, which fight are you talking about? When oh, I mean, the, the one, one in like the second to last, like the second to last episode of season one, he like fights with her because he doesn't like that. She kind of went behind his back and recommended him and feels like he didn't get the position on his own. And she's basically her position is, but we all help each other. And I just, I helped you because I know what you can do. So it was just kind of interesting to see their relationship when they're not talking about stuff that happened in their marriage and more like their relationship to each other as people. Yeah. Or as like, um, I, I guess it's not called Starfleet in this, but as like fellow crew members. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like I just, it's, it has such Star Trek a vibe that I just think of it as like, oh yeah, this is Starfleet and you know, that's the Enterprise. I'm like, it's, it's not Josh, stop. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, I mean, it's interesting because I kind of get both sides on that. Like, yeah, you absolutely mm -hmm. want to recommend someone you have faith in, regardless of your past of them. Like, that's what you should do. But also, man, wouldn't it suck to find out, like, the reason you got your job is because your ex-wife kind right. of read yeah. recommend you. It's like, oh, that sucks, dude. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know. I, I still think she did the right thing in that situation. Yeah, I mean, I, I think she did, too. But, like, it was just interesting to see them talking about that instead of something else yeah yeah for sure for sure all right so what about um did you have any well you already talked about the zoo storyline that stuck out to you. yeah the zoo and then of course um the egg <laughs> i like <laughs> yeah i like honestly i like all of the parts of um why do i have such a hard time with his name Bord uh, bordis bordis yeah bordis yeah i i just i liked like how serious how he is like Klingon kind of guy and he comes yeah. in and he's just like straight faced I have to have these weeks off I'm laying an egg <laughs> it's like what 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 so you know it's like this very masculine war kind of culture and he's like I'm gonna have to take a maternity leave basically <laughs> and then I think one of the other um crew members which is funny because which I think this is just an intentional part of Star Trek in Star Trek Starfleet kind of like everybody's understanding of one another kind of has some kind of knowledge of one another's race and you don't get a lot of the very what I can would consider more human nature of things. It kind of shades everything as like a hopeful light. So I like that in this he takes like maternity leave and one of the other um, one of the human males is like, I bet I couldn't get three weeks to go lay the egg. <laughs> it was like, yeah, you don't lay eggs, dude. <laughs> But I thought that was pretty funny, too. Like every, every part of that story, because like they played it where it was funny. It was definitely amusing that this very masculine guy is like, I have to lay an egg. Yeah. But at the same time, they didn't shy away from like the serious conversations of like gender and what does this mean for their kind? What does this mean for their culture? Perhaps, you know, it's hard to have a very, you know, that kind of like overly masculine culture and then. Here's a female. What do you do with that? That has to change your entire culture, right? Right. Yeah. 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 Um, what? What? As far as Bordas's storyline with the child in season one, what? The, what <laughs> stood out to you in their storyline that you thought was cool? I. What stood out to me really was the conversations about like kind of moral relativism and natural law because they don't have religion. They've established that very clearly yeah. that they don't have religion. Um, so I thought it was kind of interesting how they try and figure out where do we draw the line between right and wrong. And it kind of looks to me like that could be one of the pitfalls of like having no religion is that you're like, how do we tell what's good and bad, what's right and wrong? Like they know what it is, but they're having a hard time explaining it. And then they're also trying to figure out how do we, how do we prove this to somebody who's so different, who doesn't think, you know, that it is right and wrong. 
Yeah, and that's one thing really interesting. So um, Gene Roddenberry, the creator of Star Trek, was very atheist, wanted no religion in Star Trek. Yes. That's and then Deep Space Nine happened and was like, yeah, here's religion anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I find it really interesting that Seth MacFarlane is doing his kind of version of Star Trek, his like parody, I don't know what you want to call it, satire or something. And also is like, yeah, no religion. He's kind of very anti-religious. Mm -hmm. And to see how like you struggle with these moral questions, especially in his side, because he's not doing what Star Trek did of painting this hopeful future. He's painting like realistic future almost like these are how humans would act in these situations. People cheat on each other still, you know, we still have questions of gender of all this. And it's like, yeah, you don't really see good answers without some kind of framework. I mean, it's what's best for humankind. What's best for alien kind. I mean, all of it is relative if you take away the God part. Right. Right. Yeah. And it's, I don't know. I, I thought it was interesting to see them wrestle with the questions. And some of them, I think, as Christians, we still wrestle with. It's not that like we have a trump card and we don't have to deal with the questions anymore, but it's a lot harder to articulate. Right. Why do morals matter outside of just yeah. selfishness? It's just interesting to watch them because they they don't say, well, based on, you know, our faith or anything like that, because they don't have that. They don't look at that, but they do believe in right and wrong and they do believe in ethics and they do believe in values and dr finn cites the hippocratic oaths she's like do no harm i can't do this so it's interesting to see how they look at right and wrong and they're like okay how do we draw the line where do we let them go live their lives at what point do we live, leave them alone and at what point are we like this is our responsibility yeah and it, it's really interesting to me because you mentioned the hippocratic oath that even in our day world today but i'll focus on the show as much as i can you typically, even your non-religious peoples, aliens, whatever, still have things that very much look like religion. Like the Hippocratic Oath really sounds like a creed the way that she uses it. I'm like, right. you know, it kind of sounds like you're just doing the same thing the church does with creeds, right? Or like <laughs> um, uh, all love is love, that kind of line that a lot of secular culture throws out today. It's kind of like, um, you know, that's just a doctrine. <laughs> like that, All you're doing is like the same thing that religion is doing it, but not using the religious words or having God behind it, which a lot of religions don't have a God. So that's not really a necessary component of religion. So I'm like, you know, you guys are still kind of doing the same thing, just kind of struggling to find foundation for why you're doing it. Right. Yeah. Which I think gets to the, another part of human nature of like, I think humans are just designed to be religious. So even yeah. if you don't call it religion, you still do stuff that sounds like creeds, that sounds like doctrines. It's just going to happen. Um, okay. I know we're getting to a lot of deep conversations, but back to the show, how, how would you rate this? Because I know you seem pretty positive of the show overall, even though the first couple episodes were iffy. <laughs> if you had to go like <laughs> zero to 10, where would you put this? Um, I would say maybe like an eight or an 8.5, just because I, I do really like the show. It's a lot of fun. And I agree with I agree with their stances on things for the most part, but I don't really care for the complete. I understand if somebody is an atheist, but I don't really care for the complete contempt for religion that he shows sometimes in some yeah. of his his comments. I didn't really like that. And then um, some of the language, honestly, I could do without, but that's I'm just not used to watching that <laughs> that kind of thing. But um, mostly, mostly yeah. the religion thing. And then there are some. Sometimes, especially when he gets more into like season three, there are a couple of things that I definitely disagree with. And it's just kind of like, it's not painted like it was in season one where let's explore it. It was more like, you know, this is this, that is that. And that's the end of it. Sometimes it is. But in season three, it's more like he's visibly critiquing one part of society. And that's usually the part of society that I'm, I'm in. So if that makes any sense. Yeah, no, I get that. I um, yeah, I think pretty highly of the show overall too. Um, especially because you know, I've like you said, I've mostly only seen season one, but the um, it it does a pretty good job at still leaning into satire, and also kind of holding on to the let's explore, let's see what things are actually about, and have the deeper conversations, which. It's hard to use satire and still be, have that exploration thing, you know, because satire is typically just used to make fun of something. <laughs> so I thought they handled kind of balancing the two pretty well in the first season. So, uh, yeah, I think eight. I think eight's good. It's definitely a show that I enjoyed that I would watch again. But I, you know, I wouldn't put in it's like one of my favorite shows. I'd still probably rather watch Mando. <laughs> <laughs> but that's just me. It's definitely one of my favorite shows by this point, but I would still like 
the only reason I'm taking points off is because of what I mentioned. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's fair. It, it's always one of those, like, th- there are some shows that can do really well at talking about stuff you don't agree with and it's still being enjoyable. Then there are shows where it's like, they're kind of making fun of you and it's like, eh, hard to get past that sometimes. I know I really like South Park, but there's definitely a few episodes that I'm like, yep, can't sit with that one. <laughs> but that's that's fine. <laughs> anyway, so we've we've mentioned before, um, the creator kind of hates religion and yet still talks about a lot of topics that we do care about as religious people. Yes. So sometimes they might answer it the same. Sometimes I might answer some of these things a little bit different. Um, I just kind of want to touch on a few of those. We've already talked about this a lot, but as far as how they handle the marriage, divorce, maybe them getting back together, how does how did that sit with you as far as like how they handle that question? I thought it was interesting because like as a Catholic, obviously I believe that marriage is forever. Uh, well, until you know, until you die. Um, yeah. But uh, so sometimes like I'll I'll be watching a movie and if they'll met they'll mention that like one of the characters was already married and then they get together with someone else. And so even if I enjoy the movie, it still makes me a little bit uncomfortable in the back of my mind, because as far as the Catholic church teaches, that's not, that's not allowed. That's not supposed to happen. So when I started watching this and then the two of them are like, they're kind of each other's counterpart, how, whichever way you look at it, even in the first episode, they started kind of like something bad happens and they immediately look at each other or they they're joking with (laughs) each other. And it's just like, it's just kind of their go-to thing that they do because they, they already know each other kind of better than anyone. So I did like the way that that was handled. I like that they start exploring kind of forgiveness, um, especially him towards her. Um, and then they do end up thinking about getting back together near the end. They kind of experiment with it and then ultimately decide, at least at the end of season one, they decide that it's probably not best for their command positions. Um yeah. But then, of course, they have that one episode that I really didn't care for overall, but they do mention (laughs) that it may not have been altogether her fault. So then that's also another element of their relationship that they have to kind of explore. Yeah, I um, I think marriage without religion in general is just a hard thing to think about for me because I'm like, Mm -hmm. it is to me innately religious, (laughs) you know, like marriage itself is religious things. Like, why are these people who are anti-religious really care about it i don't know um that still happens in our world too you know i have good friends who are atheists that are married and i'm like cool definitely support your relationship you know like (laughs) whatever but it's always hard for me to think of like other than like tax cuts why (laughs) you know like i don't know because it's it is a religious thing so it's interesting how they still seem to be pulled towards one another even after all the crap that happened so i I don't know. I kind of like how they handled it because it's real, right? Like those things do happen. Yeah. Even, even in religious communities, you know, you have pastors, well, not in the Catholic church, but you know, on our, our side of things, we've had pastors who've like done terrible things and still managed mm-hmm. to get back together with their spouse. Or you have different people in the church who are able to kind of navigate this thing of finding out how to heal their marriage and forgiveness really well sometimes, and sometimes not very well. Right. Like, <laughs> So, yeah, I think that's that's it was a fun question to see explored from that perspective. Um, I mentioned zoos. It was kind of interesting. Um, I don't know. It just felt like sometimes some of the episodes, I'm just like they are almost forgetting that they're divorced. Sometimes it feels like they're act, they're yeah. almost acting like a married <laughs> couple still, even in the way they talk to each other, both good and bad. It just feels like they they kind of they fell back into their old relationship almost. Oh, yeah, definitely. Definitely. And then like. Um, Seth MacFarlane is, is the captain as well, right? Yes. The actor. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He does a great job <laughs> just <laughs> acting out everything. Like you, like yeah. you could kind of feel what he's feeling. And I'm like, yeah, you tell her, <laughs> you know, and I'm like, I'm both like angry and laughing. And I'm like, this is great. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, which I think it actually does lead well into the zoos that I wanted to talk about because they were both captured and made as a zoo exhibit together. <laughs> And the aliens loved it because they were so, um, so much drama that they got to see. Yeah. So much bakering, but like, they still (laughs) obviously care for one another. They're all like watching like, wow, this is so fascinating, (laughs) which was super amusing. Um, of course they also use that to just attack zoos as us enslaving animals. My quick little zoo apologetic rant, I guess, (laughs) would just kind of be (laughs) on, um, 
depending on what zoo you go to. So I, I very strongly feel like only go to AZA accredited zoos. You can look that up pretty easily. Um, but usually their biggest role isn't to make money and put animals in crates. <laughs> They're right. yeah. looking up how what makes these animals happy, how to prolong their lives, you know, if they're endangered or extinct, what can we do to reintegrate them into the world? How can we rescue animals? Um, on average, I forget how it is, but on average, animals who are in AZA accredited zoos and aquariums live a lot longer, tend to be a lot happier because our waters are very polluted. Our nature's very polluted. Even your, you know, your safe habitats in Africa and stuff, poachers find ways to you know, get the animals out of the area by, you know, laying traps, but then they kill them. And it's honestly, if we lived in a perfect world where the waters were all clean and everything was perfect, I would also be anti-zoo. And the world that we live in, I think it's important that we preserve life. And I think some AZA zoos do a good job at doing that. Caveat is I still see the points on the other side and I don't think I'm completely right. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. But other than that, um, how did you feel like they handled the zoo episode overall? Yeah. Um, so kind of similar, I guess, to, to what you said. I did ask, um, I asked my sister who is getting a minor in biology, um, what she thought about it kind of. And um, I kind of already know her feelings on the subject and they're similar to mine. She does not like SeaWorld because of the way that the killer whales have been treated. She said that that habitat is way too small for those animals. She said she doesn't know what they're, she's told me before she doesn't know what they're supposed to do with them now because they really can't go back in the wild, but they shouldn't have been there in the first place. On the other hand, SeaWorld does a really good job with the smaller animals like the sea lions and the penguins and then the manatees they rescue and then the ones that they can't send back, they keep. So it should be done, I think, more like that if there's an animal that there are a lot of the time zoos have animals that they rescue and they can't send back. So they, they shouldn't be back in the wild that it's not good for them, but they also need to watch, pay attention to the habitats. And then also like SeaWorld used to have polar bears, but they looked miserable all the time. And then eventually they just died from like, they didn't know how to handle them. They were too big and they were in Florida. So that was a very bad, uh, yeah. they were, they were in like an air conditioned building, but it, it's not the same as being outside. Like zoos in Canada have polar bears who live, very long lives because they're in their natural habitat and they're just being cared for and, and they're happy. The ones at SeaWorld were not. Yeah, which SeaWorld's always an interesting one because they, they are AZA accredited. They have mm -hmm. saved more marine life than any other organization on Earth. Oh, yeah, I can believe that. But <laughs> yeah, a lot of the stuff hasn't been handled well and they're still trying to figure out how to like, what do you do about your past sins? kind of mm -hmm. stuff you know like even though they've recognized some stuff was done wrong with like the killer whales it's like well now what do we do though and right. there really isn't the a good answer the, <laughs> the thing with the killer whales is that they said they were going to try and make their habitat more close to what they would be living in in the wild but all they did was paint it like the only thing that looks more like the wild is how the humans see it the whales are still in this enclosed tank that's way too small for them to be I think I think it's like the way yeah. that they communicate is echolocation. And then when they throw their sound, it bounces off the walls back at them. So it's not a good environment. Yeah. Yeah. There's definitely still some things they could improve, should improve. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. But it's, you know, and that's across the board. That's usually the thing with the zoos and even, you know, some churches. It's like, even if I like a lot of what you do, there's always going to be something that I'm like, well, yeah, well, let's not do that. That's kind of <laughs> awful. Maybe even evil. <laughs> you know, let's not. Um, yeah. I'm not going to go too much further on that one. But I, I did like how the episode did kind of paint a picture of like what it's like when creatures do have too small a habitat or when they're not cared for correctly. Mm -hmm. You know, I think if more people actually cared about what it took to be AZA accredited and what any right. of this meant, we could have better zoos. And I would prefer that. Um, and then I, there's also this whole other aspect of... Um, there was a younger female, I can't remember her name, younger female who took the lead as captain for this episode. Oh, so you yeah, Laura. Her, yeah, you got to see her first exploration. And I, I'm always a big fan of young female heroes for whatever reason. I love Miss mm -hmm. Marvel. <laughs> you know, I love um, Spider-Gwen. I'm like, yeah, this is great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I think, and then the, what they did for the trade at the end, that was what was funny. That was funny. They replaced the exhibit. <laughs> Yeah. With a giant TV hooked to reality <laughs> TV, like our time reality TV. So they're watching like. <laughs> they um, just 
traded yeah. them the whole archive of <laughs> reality television, which was that was very yeah. funny. Yeah, no, it, it, was, it was it was good. I was trying to remember the one that was like um, the, the Bachelor. They were watching The Bachelor. Oh, I don't, for a little I don't bit. even oh, know what show funny. they were watching, but they were going through like the list, and they're like keeping yeah, up with like, the what? <laughs> Yeah, like what is this these animals are crazy <laughs> and like it's our yeah. best exhibit ever <laughs> <laughs> and humans are crazy especially on reality tv <laughs> so we, we've talked about the storyline but i'm curious as far as like with bordis having the first female for me it gets on a lot of things a you know how toxic overly masculine culture can be but then b i also thought of like what if humans just what if we just had a third gender born one day like how do we even like how do you make sense of that you know like there's well, just a whole new thing but the thing is they even say later in the episode it's really not the first female oh yeah that's right it just they haven't had them they just don't I don't know, but they just don't like, they, I don't know. To me, it's like, it's, it's kind of like the Taliban if they figured out how to do gender surgery. I don't, I don't yeah. like, they just don't like the female sex. So they just get rid of them. I don't know. But I mean, like, cause Bordis's, uh, Bordis's mate tells him later, I was born female and didn't realize that until. Oh yeah. In the episode. Yeah. Clyden you're says, right. Yeah. So that kind of gets back to even like, a toxic masculinity and then b also some of your transgender surgery kind of stuff too it's like they're kind of getting into both of those at once man that's dicey i almost feel like they didn't really like it's almost like the transgender thing was an, not an afterthought but like they picked something that both sides would agree is wrong like you don't perform yeah. a gender surgery on an infant so they they made that very clear because they didn't like anger either side they were like okay everyone should agree this is wrong and then yeah. that was like the that was the plot. To me, it was kind of more of the conflict was how do we now deal with somebody's culture that believes that this is right, and how do we stop it without losing their our alliance with them? Kind of. Yeah, because that's it's not the same thing as like some of the transgender arguments in our time. It's not what does the person feel like they are. It's no, we just simply don't like females. <laughs> that's really yeah, all. Pretty it much. Is. <laughs> yeah. So. And I don't know, like, yeah. I don't know what you've seen of season two, but in seasons two and three, the whole Mocklin storyline does get continued. So they, Ooh. you see the Mocklins again, and there are some new plots that get introduced that are pretty interesting. I don't mind spoilers. You kind of want to fill everybody in on what happens. All I'm going to say is there are more females born than they care to admit. Interesting. They just huh. don't like females. They they say that their society is heavily industrialized, so they don't believe that fem females, they think females are too weak to survive. So they just change them all to male. So like they act like, you know, a female born is That's such a strange. surprise, but it's like the government is just kind of keeping it quiet. Like everybody kind of knows, yeah, there's a gender surgery that if you have a female, that's what you're just supposed to do. But they huh. act like it's a rare thing and it's not really as rare as they're um, painting it. So that's, I mean, that's a whole nother layer. And that's such a, <laughs> such a fascinating concept. And I don't know. Sometimes I like things like that that are like really exaggerated forms of problems that we occasionally do have. Because I think mm -hmm. there is often where we overstress the importance of masculinity in our culture, but never to that le level. <laughs> so it's easier to criticize that. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. And then they also had at that like near the end of the episode, the other female, um, Havina, who they got to come testify yeah. in the trial. I almost forgot about her. That's um, man. Wild storyline. I do need to finish the series. Do they? Do they? <laughs> do they finish the storyline? Do they have like a nice ending to it? Of Topa? Yeah. The the baby. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> so I will just wait. Um. So, were there anything else as far as like you know? I know they talk on about a lot of stuff like cancer culture, the morality of war, moral relativism. We talked about before. Is there anything else you wanted yeah. to touch on before we wrap this up? Um. I liked the. The cancel culture episode. I thought that was really funny and a little bit scary at times, but it was just like <laughs> he has to go on an apology tour and he goes on this show that's almost like The View and it's like he has to get them to believe that he's sincerely sorry. And it's just it feels <laughs> a lot of the time like what happens in our in our own day, like somebody says something on social media, they get canceled and then they have to go like apologize and do this, that and the other thing. And then 
you know, they, and it was funny. They have a line in there. They're like, they're more sympathetic if you're talented. So can you like sing or dance or anything like that? <laughs> yeah. And it's true, right? Like, yeah. <laughs> I honestly, I, I think one of the most fascinating, like real life versions of that story is like James Gunn and how like we all thought he was going to be canceled and Disney already fired him. And then mm-hmm. like he kind of did an apology tour basically. <laughs> And now he's like not only forgiven by Disney doing Guardians 3, but he's going to be like the head of DC Universe. Yeah. Like, oh, weird. We all thought yeah, you were going to be weird. canceled a couple years ago. <laughs> Good thing you're talented, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's um, and that's not great. And and this is something I think that talking to the, the guy, I hate to do the both sides isms, but a yeah cancel culture i don't i don't like it i don't like that these kind of things happen and if you're more talented Mm -hmm. it's kind of more okay obviously that's kind of evil i don't love that um it also does bug me how many conservative christians complain about cancel culture and how we would never do that when like realistically the church was kind of the first one to do cancel culture we canceled a lot of people (laughs) you know we just called it calling them heresies or you know disassociating (laughs) with them or whatever else like we called it something else but we kind of started now (laughs) The issue now is that there's a lot of like double standard. Like you said, James Gunn, he was, he's allowed to, you know, live his life and do his job and whatever. But if it were a conservative who did something like that, I don't think we would still be hearing from them. Yeah, no, no. And it is, yeah, it's pretty annoying. <laughs> <laughs> they, they have that double standard. The episode was funny because it's like the the punishment is correction meaning you you get a lobotomy i mean like you're you're kind of a <laughs> you're a mental vegetable for the rest of your life because you didn't you did something stupid or you didn't believe what they believed and it could be something really big and it could be something really small and it's just fun like it's the upvote downvote i saw somebody in a comment once called that oh that's the death by reddit episode yeah you know is, yeah which is kind of true <laughs> kind of and then the, accurate the scene where like alara has without knowing it she's wearing a hat from like a certain region of the planet or whatever and somebody's like you're appro-, like basically telling her she's appropriating his culture and then they're gonna do the same thing to her if she doesn't take it off <sighs> yeah the, the, yeah that stuff annoys me um <laughs> i uh yeah well one one double standard that happens to work in my my favor and it's not even a double standard it's just kind of a like a random weird one so there's a like the chop and s- chant that you do to cheer for Florida State Seminoles started there. It started by the Seminole tribe because the in the Native American tribe is like closely associated with the school. I'm a big fan of the school. So we get to do all that. We have a lot of fun. Other teams like the Braves and the Chiefs took up that same chant and movement and everything from our team because they thought it looked like so much fun. And they get very heavily criticized because you're appropriating culture and all this. And it's like, I get where you're coming from. They kind of are because they weren't given permission to do it, but they're not actually doing anything different than our team. Is. <laughs> so I'm like, I feel like kind of bad if I hate on them for that, you know, <laughs> like that's not right. Right. <laughs> uh, but I, um, yeah. And then there's stuff like, I'm a big fan of free speech. Um, mm-hmm. I'm going to go to law school and hopefully help defend free speech stuff is like one of my big things. I always think that more free speech is kind of the answer usually rather than less. You know, I, mm-hmm. I'd rather have someone be able to freely express terrible opinions and then other people express good opinions and us actually explore ideas and see what's right in the end. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I think in our current culture, we would have never got to see people fly because <laughs> we would have just all agreed that that was stupid and they didn't believe in science. Right. You know? Yeah. Like, it's a lot of people shouting over each other. Yeah, so we got to be able to like explore new ideas. Um, that being said, like there was a thing at Stanford recently, a judge came to speak and a lot of people protest by saying really profane, awful things during his speech. That's not what I mean by more free speech. <laughs> <laughs> let him say his thing and then you say your thing and let's all be respectful and not cancel people for what they have to say or shout over one another, but rather hear out ideas, even if they're absurd, and really explore them, which I think gets at the heart of what Star Trek was really all about and kind of what the Orville is all about too. You know, even though they're more liberal than I would be, mm-hmm. I, I think that's still kind of the heart of it is well, let's explore things more. Yeah. It's interesting when they take a problem and they kind of look at it from both sides or not even two oh, yeah. sides, sometimes multiple sides. And they're trying to figure out, you know, what's right, what's wrong. And at what point do we get involved? 
Yeah. And I'm I'm sure we probably stepped on somebody's toes in this episode because <laughs> we're talking about all kinds of like, you know, transgender, um, gender reassignment, uh, zoos, um, cancel culture. It's a hot, hot button series, hot button episode of our show. So thank you for joining me for it. <laughs> um, we can go ahead and jump into our wrap up today. And we always start with a recommendation, um, which I gave mine earlier. Watch Deep Space Nine. It's awesome. It's, uh, you know religions and star trek or if you like the same kind of humor as the orville lower decks is fantastic great animated series really funny also in this kind of star trek e vein except for that one is actually star trek um Alyssa, did you have any recommendations you wanted to leave people with um i'm watching next generation i'm enjoying it uh so my sister Kristen, actually wrote a comic and she's writing a series it's called The Black Shadow, and it's published by her comic company called Screaming Fish Comics, so I went with her to sell it. And it's it's really good, so I would recommend if anyone wants to check it out to look it up. Oh, yeah. Can we put a show a link in the show notes or anything where people can find it? Is that possible to get that? Yeah, I can ask her if she has one. Okay, sweet. Yeah, just so people can go and see what that's all about, and maybe we'll talk to her about that someday, too. That'd be really cool. Yeah, yeah I think <laughs> awesome. she'd like to do that, because she likes to do, yeah. like... She's writing it kind of in the, the spirit of like the, I don't know, like the, the older, like cleaner comics. So, Oh, nice. Those, those are always fun. Yeah. <laughs> we are big fans of comics from every era, really. And if you want to hear us talk about some comics, we on our Patreon, we have a comic book catch up series. We do once a month where some of our hosts just catch everybody up on what we've been talking about, what we've been reading in comics these days. So. You know, go over to our Patreon, check that out. Go to our website, systematicgeekology.org. There's a drop down menu that says host. You can see all your hosts there, as well as a guest tab. So you can see where some of our guest episodes have been. And um, of course, guys, we need you all to do us a favor and remember that we're all a chosen people, a geekdom of priest. This was an Anazao Ministries podcast. If you enjoyed this show and would like to learn more about our network, be sure to check out the Anazao Ministries podcast network.